Hi everybody, welcome to A Psych. I'm Miss M, and today we're going to do a quick video on Andrade's doodling study, and we're only going to talk about the sample and our variables. Okay, so let's get into this. So for Andrade, we had a sample of 40 um, members of a medical research panel. Now, they were volunteers for this medical research panel, but this is considered um, a opportunity sample. And the reason for this kind of has to do with, you know, Andrade being a little tricky about the study. Remember, it's on on memory. Um, so she wanted people to be really bored in the study. So what happened was she took these 40 members that already previously volunteered for another research study. And as they were done and kind of walking out of the room, she stopped them and said, hey, 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 any chance any of you can stay for another five minutes to be part of another study? Okay, so she knew they were going to be tired. She knew they were probably going to be bored or they were already bored. Um, but that's how she obtained her, her part or her participants. So it's the, it was the best opportunity for her. Um, now, our variables in the study, we have doodling and non-doodling. Okay, so if you were in the doodling group, you uh, basically were just given a piece of paper that had circles and squares on it, and you were told that you were going to listen to a video um, of someone talking about a party, and that you had to remember the people and then the names of the people who were attending the party, and not the names of people who were not attending the party. So that's what you were told. If you were in the non-doodling group, you were just given a blank line piece of paper, and um, you were told that you were going to listen to a phone call and you were supposed to pay attention to people who were attending the party and not the people not attending. Um, they were allowed to doodle if they wanted to, but um, the doodling group had to doodle. We said, doodle while you listen to this. Um, and actually one participant didn't want to doodle, so uh, he got, and got kicked out of the study. <laughs> it's kind of weird, right? I refuse to doodle. Anyway. Um, so that was basically it. We had our two groups of participants. They listened to a really monotonous phone call, really boring, boring phone call about people going to a party. And, um, at the end, we told them they were, we were going to give them a little quiz. Now, yes, we quizzed them on the names of the people attending the party. That was monitoring. Okay. They monitored that throughout the whole time they were doodling or listening. We told them what to listen for. So they were like monitoring the phone call, listening for those, that information about people attending the party, listening for those names, paying attention to it. Now, the recall portion, which is the actual memory portion, we asked them the names of the places that were mentioned in the story. So names of these cities or places that this girl had mentioned while she was talking. So we basically are... Our dependent variable is measuring the monitoring, which names of people attending the party. How many of these are they going to get correct? And how many are they going to get correct of this recall portion of the names of places mentioned? Now, we did some counterbalancing because I know what you're thinking. Well, whichever group is going to say the names of the, the people attending will probably get it right because that's fresh on their mind. Well, what we did was we took our groups and we, you know, kind of any mini mini mo who's going first, counterbalance. And um, we gave one group the quiz first where they had to name the people and then the places. And the other group had to name the places, then the people. Okay. At the end of the day, if both groups get that first part of the question right, then we know the experiment didn't work. Okay. Because it just has to do with whatever they heard last. Right. Um, but it turns out that the doodling group got both of those groups better, like got better scores on both of those groups than the non-doodling group. It didn't matter what order they were in, okay? Go look at your data, the, it's very similar. So what this is telling us is that the, the doodling group did a lot better because they doodled. Now, we don't know if, they, if the doodling is going to help attention or if it's going to help memory because they did better on both. Um, and that's kind of where we're left at the end of this Andrade study in the conclusions. Was it attention or was it memory? We still don't know that. But we did find out that doodling can help 
either or attention slash memory. Um, maybe that combination of both. All right. So I hope this helps you out. Remember our sample, it's 40 members of a medical research group. They were um, 18 to 55 years old. They were mostly women. Okay. Um, that's going to be most of our studies. And um, our variables were either doodling or non-doodling. And we were measuring basically whether or not they got the answers right on this little quiz that they took after of people attending the party and names of places mentioned. All right. So I hope this helps you out. Um, if you need some more help, you can check out my Andrade video. Um, if you need more help in psychology in general, you can send me an email, apsychology9990 at gmail.com. Um, I do have a Google Classroom. It has plethora of information for you, studying materials. Um, it's, it's got everything. So send me a, uh, a message asking for access and I'll just send you a quick invite. Okay. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.